If a little green is good, more is even better. Now, back to Green is Good with John Shigarian and Mike Brady. Welcome back to Green is Good. We are so honored today to have Lyndon Rive on the phone with us. Lyndon, thank you for being a guest on Green is Good, and welcome to Green is Good. We've been talking about your great company, Solar City, for the last year or so, so it's an honor to have you finally on our show. Well, thank you so much for having me. Well, Lyndon, you're a lifelong entrepreneur. You start you you started starting businesses uh, when you were 17 years old. You have got a huge history of success already under your belt. And uh, the last company you sold uh, to Dell, I think, in 2007, Everdream, and and you co-founded Solar City in 2006. What made you get involved with the Green Revolution? What was your epiphany? What was your magic moment? And how has it gone since 2006? So, you know, the, the last company was a company called Everdream, as you mentioned, and it was focused on enterprise software. Okay. After doing enterprise software for, for nine years, you know, the, the excitement just, just wasn't there. <laughs> um, uh, both myself and my brother are extremely passionate about the environment, and we're looking at what can we do to really address some of the uh, environmental challenges that we face. And uh, we looked at all different parts of of renewable energy and realized that solar is one renewable energy technology that essentially is infinitely scalable. It can go almost everywhere in the U.S., um, and uh, people seem to be able to relate to it. Uh, But the challenge of solar is the cost and the adoption rate was extremely slow. Right. So, so we decided, and what can we do to, to fix this problem? Instead of just sitting on the sidelines and complaining, what can we do to, to really help the adoption of, of solar? And this is why we started Solar City. And tell us what the model is and how you're different from other solar companies. Why does a guy like Josh Dorfman, who is a wonderful source of information, the lazy environmentalist, why does he come on our show and even say, hey, tell our listeners you should be looking up Solar City, which, by the way, you can look up at SolarCity.com. Why, why, why are you becoming the name brand and how are you differentiated from your competitors? You know, it's actually quite, quite, quite simple. We, we listen to the customers and ask them, What's preventing you to go solar? The number one reason that we get from our customers is the upfront cost. Um, So for the first year of of starting the company, that has been our our primary focus. So we we focused on reducing the cost. But reducing the cost wasn't enough. Even at 10 or 20% less than um, the competitive uh, rate, it was still too expensive. It was still twenty thousand dollars to to get a solar system. Right. So this is where we invented the solar lease program. Ah. And you so, were the first to do that. And what does that look like? And you were the first to create this. That's correct. Um, so the goal of the program was how do you get somebody to go solar, but not investing a single cent and saving money on day one. Mike and I like this. This sounds good already. So so we came up with uh, the solar lease program. Okay. The homeowner can now go solar, okay. not invest a single dollar, and start saving money from day one. So let's say your electric bill is $200 a month. Right. You'll get a solar system. Your new electric bill, combined with your lease payments, will add up to about $170 a month. So you'll save $30 a month, um, use clean power, and uh, make no investment. Okay, so now you, you, you go from being... Software enterprise guy, you know, really, you know, uh, highly successful. Everdream was a huge success. And now you come up with this idea with your brother. And now it's 2006. Are people telling you you're crazy? Are people telling you this ain't going to work? I mean, how does that, or, or how does that look at that point? You, you, know, you know, it's, it's, it's actually traditional entrepreneur um, feedback when you start a company is most people go, you know, it's probably not the best place for you to start a company. Um, when we started the company, most recommendations that we're getting is if you're going to start a solar company, start a um, solar panel manufacturing company. Right. And, um, and we actually did look at that, and we, we just thought, you know, that, that's not going to move the needle. Um, we have to eliminate the barriers to adoption, and that's not done... Uh, on the uh, technology side. The technology works. The technology that's out there today has been proven. Um, 
Uh, they are all high quality, so you, you get many different panel manufacturers, um, and most of them are, are really good quality. This is a proven technology. Okay. So we felt that the reason for uh, getting into the service business um, would address most of the uh, challenges for homeowners for adopting solar. And um, traditional investors don't like service business because there's no barrier to entry. Um, your competitions can copy you left and right. Um, they, they prefer technology plays. Um, but you know, smart investors who have done service uh, plays before know that if you get the right team, um, they will be able to out-execute uh, the competition. So did you, how hard was it? How much money did you raise in 2006? And how was the adoption of your new concept as you started so, going? So 2006, we just got started. We, we decided the best way to grow was to buy two smaller companies. Okay. Um, so we had the um, start of the team. So we had experience. We, we had all the licenses that we needed to, to do the installations. Um, but we, we didn't focus on, on the financing. 2007, we started okay. focusing on, on the financing. Okay. But, but in the interim, we uh, started focusing on reducing the cost of installation because we didn't have financing in 2007. Right. So we came up with this program known as a community program. So you go into a community of homes yep. and you tell the community, look, instead of me just selling one house, if I sell 50 homes in this community, I'll give you all a discount. Ah, and then that that launched us. So that made us number one in the state just by that single program. Really? So you you just took it from a volume, a sheer volume standpoint, making it more affordable for the homeowners. And I, I guess one of the things too is, Lyndon, when when uh, nothing succeeds like success, you make one sale, get that initial neighbor to buy into it. He starts talking or she starts talking to their neighbors, and pretty soon you're able to deal in volume, and everybody wins. Uh, absolutely, it's, it's a it's a three part win. The customer wins because um, they get lower uh, 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 cost, station cost, and we win as um, a company a volume in a certain area. And the environment wins. Absolutely, that's the third part. There you wow. go. You got it right. <laughs> hey, so, so so this um, is wonderful. So that's how you got going here. Now, go back to this. I want to just bring up. We have a lot of entrepreneurs that listen to the show. So I want to go back to a subtlety. Talking about the right team to execute. When you moved from Everdream over to this concept that you and your brother had in '06, did you bring a lot of your Everdream team with you? Actually, we did. Um, just just so the listeners know, my brother and I started the previous company together as well. Okay. So so we. Um, We've been working together a long time, a very long time, actually. Got it. So, That's nice. So, so a very long time. Um, uniquely different. So he's he's the best in the world when it comes to technology operations and um, uh, execution. I mean that that's his clear strength. Got it. And then and then my strength is business development, sales, marketing. Perfect. So so we we supplement each other very well. Got it. Um, but yeah, we did bring uh, many of the employees from. Uh, ever dream to to solo city um, in the two acquisitions that we made in the early stage that was core to the company um, we interviewed probably thirty or so different solar companies and um, it was crucial to find the right culture got it and so 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 we managed to breed this this culture where work hard play hard um, but focus on execution uh, as a priority and then strategy uh, as 1%. You know, a, a, a mistake that many entrepreneurs make is there's too much focus on strategy. Right. Uh, you need strategy. Sure. But that, uh, that only requires uh, 1 or 2% of your time. Identify the strategy and then focus the rest of your time on executing the strategy. Right, right, right. So oh seven, 07, you started executing and you raised money? Yes. So the, the challenge with raising money, um, specifically for a solo lease program, um, is volume. Right. So we really encountered this problem. So in 2007, the biggest reason why we weren't able to, to offer the leasing program is the volume was not interesting to, to the banks. Got it. Um, it's fairly complicated to structure this program, and unless you're going to do large volume with the bank, they don't want to uh, bother. Right. So this is why we launched the community program 
the community program allowed us to get to volume. Once we achieved the volume, then we were able to um, structure a relationship with the banks uh, to do the leasing program. Got it. So, so it had to, had to build with each other. You had to do one and then the other. Got it. Uh, uh, 2008 was the year of launching the leasing program that made us the uh, largest uh, residential solar company in, in the country. And by then you were venture-backed? Yes. Um, so venture funding, we've raised in total of uh, just under $80 million Wow. For Good for you. That's amazing. And so then you, took the, then you took the show on the road. So now you're across America? We are in four states today. Um, we in, uh, cover most of California, Arizona, uh, Colorado, and Oregon. Are you number one in California? We are. And how are you in, in Arizona and Arizona, uh, Arizona and Colorado? Um, Arizona, definitely, by, by a healthy margin. Um, Colorado, we just opened up the doors two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Wow. So, wow. so we, we still are very new in uh, Colorado. And then Oregon, uh, we, we just launched there as well. So those are two new states for us. So, I mean, tell us, I mean, all, no pun in, intended in terms of the blue sky here, but solar power is less than 1% of the U.S. electric market right now. Is this like an, uh, is this as many hours as you want to work and as much as you want to dream? Solar City has that far of an opportunity in front of it. Absolutely. In, in our lifetimes, the solar industry will see infinite growth. Um, the, the the market's there. Uh, people see the value. They like the notion of getting cheaper, cleaner power. Uh, it's it's a very clear value proposition. Um, I've sold many things in my life, and it's rare to find something that crystal clear. Um, so consumers want it, um, the uh, market wants it, uh, the environment needs it. So uh, I see solar adoption for the next 20 years um, to continue at the, at the growth rate that, it, that it's been going. Well, Lyndon, let me just uh, give voice to a question that's been uh, running around in my head right now. As, as John mentioned, uh, less than 1% of the uh, power provided is uh, by solar power, but when things finally kick in, what, what do you see the saturation point uh, being for a typical home uh, in, in your best guess of a scenario? How, how much of the, uh, the electrical power would be supplied by solar within the next five years? So our average customer in California, we supply, our solar systems provide them between 60 and 85 percent of their power. On, on average. And that's at the present rate? That, that's at the, the current rate, exactly. Okay, all right. Um, now, you, we could provide more power, but we leave a little buffer in there uh, for energy efficiency improvements. Okay, okay. So it's, um, it, we could do 100%, but then uh, the energy efficiency, uh, the solar power would just be wasted if they do energy efficiency improvements. Got it. So, I mean, wh- when, when you go into a, a community now in a household, what is your sell-through rate in terms of the leasing program versus the household buying it? And is this only for household solar city, or is it now also, are you morphing it into a business opportunity also for businesses? You know, the, we're known for our uh, residential business, right. um, but most don't know that uh, a little over 50% of our business is commercial. Oh, so Solar City is for businesses out there. So anyone who's listening out there that's interested in this proposition for their business also can go to solarcity.com and also get an opportunity to avail themselves of your program for their business. Yeah, and for business, it works very similar. So instead of doing a lease, we do a power purchase agreement, which is known as a PPA. Right. And um, how that works is we sell the business uh, kilowatt hours. Okay. So we sell them uh, essentially the, the electricity, and the cost of the electricity for a business is, in most cases, either at the same price and sometimes a little less. The savings are not as great as for residents, just because the cost of power for residents is higher than for commercial, but they, they do see some savings, gotcha. and, and they get to lock in their energy rates, and most importantly, they get to use clean power. And for the homes, I don't want to. I want to also go back to the homes. Is the value proposition almost always favoring the solar city model when you go into a home in terms of saving the household money on their energy bills? Um, 
when you get into a small electric bill, yeah. so let's say around 80 or or $100 as your electric bill, sure. then it's hard to uh, show savings okay. on the uh, solar lease program. Gotcha. Um, anything over $150, um, you start seeing savings uh, with uh, the solar lease. And this applies to, to California. This is not the case in, in Arizona or Oregon uh, okay. or Colorado. There, small electric bills work. Got it. I understand. Um, just because California, the electricity is sold in different tiers. The more power you use, the more expensive it is. Got it. So the answer is, in most cases, yes, California being a little bit of its own animal. But for the most cases, you take this across America, for anybody's uh, bill size, your your program should work very, very well. Yeah. And, you know, some homeowners prefer to, to buy it. So in that case, we'd absolutely sell it to them. Got it. Um, uh, other homeowners like the notion of, uh, leasing the system so they, don't, they have a production guarantee. We guarantee the output. So we, if we say it's going to produce 10,000 kilowatt hours a year, uh, we guarantee it. And if it doesn't, we'll pay you the difference. That's wonderful. So, uh, so, so you're a young man, Lyndon, with years of business ahead of you. So take us through the 1%. 1% is today. When you and your brother you know, sit down to a dinner and talk about what the future is and how many states we have in this nation and beyond – where do you want to get the, the – how far is, can you take 1%? What number is Solar City aiming for to, to create a, a solar economy here in America? Yeah, I think we can definitely shoot for 20%, um, uh, almost growing 1% per year. Wow. So um, – That's incredible. Uh, That's the, incredible. Uh, it's a dramatic growth, but the – you know, my, my forecast is that – probably between 10 to 15 years from now, a primary source of new power will be solar. Okay. So, so, so remember, you have this massive legacy infrastructure that uh, you can't displace. Right. So over 20 years, you know, our, uh, 20% of our, our power can come from solar. But um, my forecast is that you know, 10 to 15 years from now, a primary source of new power will be solar. So, you know, with any good... With any good information and with any great business concept or uh, empirical information, you always have the naysayers. You know, Al Gore has his naysayers, and, 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 and everybody who's doing something that's groundbreaking or paradigm shifting always has its detractors. Tell us about uh, the debate among environmentalists and the advantages of large, large-scale solar power plants and the threat to the environment. Where does Solar City stand on that with regards to some of the people who like to, you know, sometimes uh, throw arrows at great concepts? Sure. So the, the debate is essentially around large solar farms out in, in, in the desert that um, will disrupt the, the environment. Gotcha. Um, the... You know, Solar City's position is that all renewable power is, is important to solve uh, the environmental challenges that we face. So you t- you're talking large-scale and small-scale solar. Right. Now, we have not been too involved with the, the details of, of that debate. As our, our primary focus is rooftop solar. Right. Um, so we, we do do large-scale. So we do a megawatt or two megawatts. Um, but that's, in most cases, it's on a roof. So there's no disruption to, to the environment. Gotcha. Um, and our focus is just a distributed solar. So it's, it's within the grid infrastructure. So you don't have to uh, worry about transmission lines or, or, or anything to, to that extent to yeah. carrying the power to, to the source. It, it's at the source. So really, you're steering clear. You're not in the solar farm business and are, are not part of that discussion at this point. Not at, not at this point, but I want to make clear that I yeah. am a uh, a big supporter of of solar farms, as um, I think it it it's needed combined with distributed solar. Got it. And that you you know your office is set up in Northern California, and how many employees do you have now? We are about five hundred and twenty employees. So tell us about your green DNA. I mean, I you know what is besides selling a great product that's helping transform society and the way we look at energy and use energy, what, is, uh, what, other, what are the green DNA uh, items that Solar is incorporating within its own company? You know, everything from uh, our fleet, so our, our work vehicles are the most fuel-efficient work vehicles you can get. 
Got it. Our sale team uh, drives around with Priuses. Got it. Um, all our uh, paper, brochures, everything is on recyclable uh, material and ink. <laughs> um, we uh, uh, won the Actera Award uh, for our corporate environmental contribution. Oh. So the, the Actera Award is, is a big award given to corporations for what they've done, not just as a business model of selling solar, but within the company, what are the steps you've done to... to um, be environmentally friendly. Wonderful, and who gives um, and who gives out that award? By the way, uh, Actera does. Oh, okay. okay. Um, it's, it's actually <laughs> fairly hard to to, to win it. Um, <laughs> as you're competing against some really passionate companies. So, Lyndon, and basically, you and your brother, you not only talk a good talk, but really at, at Solar City, it, the walk you have a great walk. You walk the walk over there. Yeah, it's it's really rare that that you 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 have a company where every employee. Uh, um, not only cares about the success of the company, but actually really cares about what we're doing. You know, so, uh, it, it's, I always like to refer to it as the double bottom line. Yeah. Um, the first bottom line is you got to make sure it's a sustainable business, and well, the second yeah. bottom line is make sure that that you're doing environmentally the right thing. Hey, listen, we've got about three minutes left, and I want to ask you two questions. First of all. Why don't you dispel the biggest myth about solar power, number one? And then number two, I want you to take our listeners into where the future is for Solar City and where are you going from here? So the biggest myth um, is that solar is too expensive. That, that has to be addressed. Um, solar is affordable today. Um, in fact, it, it's been affordable for, for the last two years. Um, you can save money from day one with no investment, and there's no reason why you should not do that. So that, that's the, the biggest myth. And this applies to homeowners and to, to uh, business owners. And you've done a great job today dispelling that, and I want our listeners to go to solarcity.com you know, to see how they could save money so they could contact your company. So you've dispelled that. What's next for Solar City, and how are you going to go from 1% to 20%? I want to hear your vision here. So it's really important to make this offering available to, to more homeowners. Sure. We want to expand the company uh, nationwide. Um, we are already in four states. We are going to expand to additional five states in 2010. Wow. Um, so that's going to be the ma- majority of our, our focus. Um, we are uh, helping the green economy grow as we do employ, today we employ um, about 520 employees we uh, hired over 150 people over the last six months. We expect to hire another 100 in the next six months. So it really is a um, a, a good uh, solution for not only for the environment but also the financial economy that we face. Well, you're um, you're, you're helping to build the green collar economy. Yeah, exactly. It's um, green collar workers. There's the construction industry has been hit hard. Yep. And uh, there's very talented people there that. They can apply their skills to installing solar. Well, Lyndon, I just want to say, Mike and I want to say thank you very much for joining us today. And we want to tell our listeners again, if you want to see and, and learn more about Lyndon's wonderful company, Solar City, go to solarcity.com, S-O-L-A-R-C-I-T-Y.com. And Lyndon, we're going to have you come back a year from now to give us an update on the progress of your wonderful company and your vision. And we wish you all the luck in the world. And Lyndon Rive, you are living proof that green is good. Thank you so much for having me.